What's up guys, Kevin Getz here from Mute Profit, helping you achieve musical success. Today we're talking about how to fix all the most common software issues that come along with USB audio interfaces. So as a quick aside, I'm assuming because you're here you know your problem isn't just latency. You know it's not just all oh, your processor can't handle the latency you're trying to record at. Um, I figured I'd put this in there because if you don't know that, that's probably your first issue is you need to upgrade your processor. That being said, if all your hardware checks out and you really shouldn't have a problem, then let's jump in and see what we can do. The first most common cause is motherboard interactions with your USB driver. So the way to possibly fix this is to go into your Windows menu on whatever operating system you have and you're going to type in device manager and you're going to click that. You're going to go into sound, video, and game controllers. You're going to click the expand arrow, and you're going to right click and disable anything that isn't your audio interface. So any other sound thing, you might have Realtek, you might have an NVIDIA audio controller, disable all that. If that does not fix your issue, if you're still getting blue screens, I know this is going to hurt some people. Um, if you have a slightly older motherboard that still has both USB 2.0 and 3.0 ports, Disable the 3.0 ports, assuming you're using a 2.0 interface, something that is not explicitly sold as a USB 3.0 exclusive interface. I know I love my 3.0, I know a lot of people who do. If you want this thing to work right, you're going to have to make some sacrifices while recording. I'm sorry. I mean, professional engineers will sometimes even use a dedicated computer just for recording because there are so many weird interactions that you just cannot get around with some of these interfaces. For me personally, the issue was fixed by disabling my USB 3.0 controllers. Which is, by the way, again, under your device manager, under Universal Serial Bus Controllers. You should also make sure that all unnecessary USB devices are unplugged. You know, I've personally seen this weird interaction where if I have Google Chrome open, and I have an Xbox controller plugged into my computer for gaming, and my computer auto-sleeps, you know, because I have the power management set up that it'll sleep after a little while. There's a 25% chance that when I bring it back from sleep, all the USB devices will be unpowered. Just, just unpowered, just like frozen. And then the computer will blue screen about five minutes after. And the blue screen in question is caused by the driver related to my USB audio <laughs> device. So I've seen weird things happen like that. So, and it, for the record, this was fixed by just not leaving a game controller plugged in. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why that happens. It does happen. And the last thing is a bit of a weird one. Um, if you are going into your project file and you're trying to record or mix or whatever, and you're still getting all these, these issues and you check your processor demand and yeah it's going to be under heavy load. I think I have a really good processor and one of my projects which is Symphonic Metal which is a lot of tracks, has like a 60% load on it, but it should easily handle that, right? So if your processor load is below like 90% and you're still getting issues, what you should consider looking at is treating it as a software problem within your DAW. And I actually will make another video on this in the future just because it is such a wide issue, but as a quick introduction to how you can fix this, the most common things that'll do this are too many vocal tracks with all of the effects that one typically puts on a vocal track like compression, EQ, etc. all sending to one reverb and delay. Because if you use sends to modulate the volume on your, your reverb or delay plugins, for some reason some DAWs get really weird about having that many identical effects sending to the same track. Another one that a lot of DAWs are poorly optimized for is a lot of EQ on the master bus. I don't know why that is. Um, but if you're using a lot of EQ on the master bus, like, you know, 10, 12 bands of EQ, um, you might be looking at that's part of your issue. And then if you're using like amp simulators for your guitars or your bass, um, that can be really, again, badly optimized for some CPUs. So what you can do there is once you've got all your effects sorted out, you would just freeze that track as a stem with all the effects on it already. You, you know, your DAW might call that printing to a new track. Um, yeah, so that's most of the ways that you can fix these issues. If you still have problems, let me know in the comments below because there are some outliers that I'm not familiar with that I would actually like to learn how to solve. So if this didn't do it for you, be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. And uh, yeah.
Thanks so much for watching. I have new videos on audio engineering coming out every Tuesday, as well as various other types of music lessons coming out every single day, including marketing your music, songwriting, instrumentation, creative and motivational mindsets, etc. I aim to make this channel the single destination for anything and everything you will need to achieve success in music.